Hello, um, it's September 7th, which is my dad's birthday, and uh, I know um, I'm in Canada, or Florida, something like that, but it's very hot, and um, it was um, like 90 to, 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit um, today, and I went for a walk. Anyways, I'm not going to bore you with my walk. Uh, some stuff happened, but it doesn't matter. It's just my life. Um, and uh, so I was talking to my parents about how I think the U.S. and Canada have uh, had a campaign of bombing Syria um, for some time. And there's a Canadian election and an American election both happening, and it's both for president and what the Canadians call prime minister. And, um, you know, I was just asking them, like, if we were bombing them, were we creating this refugee crisis? Because that's what um, people are talking about, taking in refugees from Syria. And obviously, on the surface, it's like, yeah, you're in a war zone, you're, you're, you don't want to be part of the war. Um, uh, yeah, we should take them in. Um, but I'm guessing, I'm, I'm not very well traveled, but I'm guessing a large number of these refugees don't speak English. Um, and I'm guessing that um, there's something called refugee status. And I asked my dad um, if someone doesn't have refugee status, but they are a refugee, um, what happens to them? And my dad, you know, he, he, he tells the truth, but he tells like the worst case scenario. He says there's something like 8,000 refugees in Canadian prisons um, right now and um, so yeah I'm wearing a sweater because it's really cold in the basement but I turned off the air conditioner we have central air so we're privileged we're so privileged that I freeze every summer <laughs> sorry I didn't mean yeah I'm whining okay so no I'm sorry I know I I, I I have it better than the refugees, at least, that's for sure, and um, better than the people in prison um, who haven't committed any crime. Um, so, um, yeah, and uh, so, uh, so I'm like, so say you're, say you're like one of the lucky refugees, and you escape the war zone, and you come to Canada, Maybe you learn some English, or maybe you learn a lot of English, but nonetheless, you are probably going to end up getting a job that is not well paid. Like, people talk about middle class and upper class and lower class and working class, and <coughs> I think, uh, most refugees coming to Canada would probably um, have, uh, they'd be the lowest class. Um, and, you know, it, it's just, it, it really hurts my head to think about it because I feel like I should be doing something and I have a disability, I'm mentally ill a lot. There are some people, you, you know, my, at least a lot of people don't fully understand what mental illness is, and of course, it's not their fault because, you know, I'm not really thinking about the refugee thing, they're not really thinking about mental illness, but, you know, there's depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, and all the, you know, borderline personality, you know, all these different things, and, um, people might know it on a surface level, and they might have someone in their family, um, whatever, um, you know, like people know something, a lot of people know enough to say, okay, well, let's not slice this guy's throat, he's not like, <laughs> I hope, um, um, I'm talking about a sane person slashing an insane person's throat.
because um, oh man, this is getting really dark. Okay, um, so what can we do to help the refugees? And apparently, you can sponsor. I heard something about supporting the Red Cross, which is a blood donor agency, and um, that's pretty obvious how that would help. Like they're coming from a war zone. And uh, something called Lifeline, I think, Syria Lifeline. I think that's the organization. But the thing is, like, as I was saying, I'm disabled. I have a mental illness. It's both episodic and chronic in that, uh, it, uh, or you could call it both acute and chronic in that I have periods of intense psychosis where basically my brain is not working in a way that um, vibes with the rest, rest of the world. <coughs> Excuse me. This does not necessarily mean I'm dangerous. It just means, like, if you know what a delusion is, like I might think that uh, if I eat this light bulb, I'll have more, more power. Like, it, haha, funny. But there's people who probably have done that. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, I was just trying to figure out what I could do to help. And, like, so the, the, there's these elections, and I, volun I tried to volunteer um, at a campaign office because we. How it works in Canada is um, you elect a member of parliament and then there's like, let's say across, all across Canada, there's 300 members of parliament and each member of parliament is responsible for a plot of land. They're responsible for governing it, setting policy, like government policy over it. So, um, say there's 200, um, <coughs> 200, these are just made up numbers, 200 member, members of parliament for one of the three parties, there's actually about five, there's at least five, there's a huge number, there's a very broad spectrum, but if you follow the news, there's at least five parties, I think, the, uh, the, the Greens, the Bloc, um, the NDP, the Liberals, and the Conservatives. So, yeah, uh, so like say 200 go to the Conservatives, 30 to the NDP, and 70 to the Liberals. And that's completely made up. It's, I don't think it's ever been, that, that would be like a huge majority. Um, but anyways, um, that's... 200 members of parliament to so-and-so. Um, uh, then that means the, the party with the most members of parliament elected elects the prime minister. So the prime minister is like the president, but he, um, I don't know exactly how it works. I think somehow we're still somewhat beholden to the Queen of England. Um, we have something called a Governor General, <coughs> which is a liaison between uh, the Parliament, um, we're a parliamentary d d democracy, I think, something, I don't know. Um, so there's Governor General, who's the, lia the, the liaison between the Prime Minister and the Queen of England. and I. When you get that far into it, I don't. I start to not really know what's happening, going on there. Uh, anyways, I just asked what I could do, and um, you know, if you have so, yeah a, a good amount of money, you can sponsor. Um, I don't know. I don't know if this necessarily means adopt, but you can sponsor. A refugee, so I assume that would work like the refugee gets a certain amount of money from you 
Um, and, you know, you need money to live. You need money for a house over your head, everything. Um, and I don't, I don't really have the, I don't have the skills to draw blood. Uh, it's probably easy to uh, acquire those skills. <coughs> I would guess that something they would discourage mentally ill people from learning. Like, it's not a job they'd want a mentally ill person to do. Even if that person is stable or whatever. Like, I, I think I, I, I feel I'm somewhat stable right now, but I, I think just they wouldn't want that. So, um, if you can hear the footsteps, that's my mom. And, uh, yeah, I'm experimenting with having the computer off. And what I want to be doing is, um, playing music. Um, so I'm going to work on that. And, uh, thank you for listening, by the way, if you did listen. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I said, if I'm worthy of being listened to. Um, so I, you know, my main focus is the guitar, and I haven't done very much. I'll try to do that later tonight if I can, but... I feel a bit better now. <laughs>